Today on City Beat, we'll explore the dangerous world of abuse within the home. Find out how the Sacramento Police Department responds to calls of domestic, child, or elder abuse. And discover what agencies partner with the police to provide services to the victims of these hideous and Great hidden crimes. For you. Plus, we'll introduce you to one success story. A survivor of domestic violence who, with the help of law enforcement, is stronger and more stable today. All that and more next on City Beat. Welcome to City Beat. I'm Joe Oliver. We all know the life of a law enforcement officer can be a dangerous one, but do you realize that statistics show one of the most perilous calls a Sacramento Police Department officer can respond to is a domestic disturbance? Of course, that danger extends not just to the police officer, but to the family involved. In our first story, we'll meet a survivor who can attest to that family violence, and we'll discover how law enforcement collaborates with local agencies to help quell the violence in Sacramento neighborhoods. White picket fences and well-manicured lawns, often considered the signs of a prosperous and happy home and family, or so we've been led to believe. These outward signs can hide inward turmoil, turmoil that devastates even the most perfect-looking families. Concern about family violence is on the rise. The statistics are staggering. Here in California, law enforcement logged almost 200,000 domestic disturbance calls in the year 2002. Every 10 seconds in the United States, a child is abused and more than a quarter of a million elders and dependent adults will become victims of abuse this year in California. We'll examine each of these forms of abuse and discover how local law enforcement deals with them. I'm the boss around here. This is my house. I paid for it. Now you listen to me. We'll begin with what many consider to be the most volatile, domestic violence. Once he started hitting me again, it just escalated very, very, very quickly from once a week, twice a week, three times a week. Amber is a survivor. She and her children escaped a violent situation after suffering years of abuse, ranging from hits and harassment to bruises and burns. Sergeant Dave Kropp of the Sacramento Police Department can attest to the danger inherent in domestic violence situations like Amber's, even for the police. Well, they're still considered very dangerous calls. I think current research indicates that 20 to 30 percent of all officers killed in the line of duty are killed uh, during or uh, as a result of their response to a domestic violence or family violence situation. As a result, the Sacramento Police Department responds to domestic disturbance calls with at least two officers. Susan Huntington of the County Department of Human Assistance collaborates with the Sacramento Police Department on many such calls. The potential danger is probably somewhat high. If we need to go make a home visit to a client and we feel that we need a law enforcement backup, then we can ask a sergeant. That access to officers and information has proven to be a valuable interagency collaboration. So in order to really effectively and comprehensively respond to and address domestic violence, you have to have the mindset of working in collaboration with other agencies. I think it's really important to have collaboration so that we can coordinate effort to impact them as effectively as possible. Along with the county's Department of Human Assistance, the Sacramento Police Department also partners with another social service agency to deal with domestic abuse, WEAVE. WEAVE stands for Women Escaping a Violent Environment. WEAVE is an empowerment agency. We believe that our clients have within them the ability to make the positive changes in their lives. WEAVE's a great resource for counseling, for emotional support. Um, they have legal advocates there. 
My name is Amanda. I'm from the legal department at Weave, and I'll be conducting... They even offer a daily restraining order class restraining for victims who are trying to change their lives and avoid their batterers. But for many victims of this harrowing experience, the first stop for help is with the police. And the police showed up, and they asked me where he was, and I told them he was in the backyard. So they went in the backyard, and um, I, I, I'd gone down the street, um, because uh, I didn't want to be there, because I was scared what was going to happen. So I went with a, and stayed, and there was another police officer that stayed with me, and I stayed down, down the street while they went in, and, and I didn't want to watch what was going on. They, he went peacefully into the police car, and, and they questioned me and the kids, and they took him away that night. Amber was also comforted by a trusted friend who listened to her plight and encouraged Amber to leave her abusive husband. Janet, as we will call her, has asked not to be identified. My friend came over to my house a few times. She'd show me some of her bruises. She came over one time and had a bruise on her stomach, so she asked me to take a picture. I said, you know, you've come over a few times. Next time you come over, I am calling the cops. I'm very glad that she called the police. I was very grateful for that, that someone would actually be brave enough to do that for me. Just as her friend was able to assist Amber, you too may be able to help a friend or loved one escape domestic violence. Domestic violence is verbal, physical, emotional, or sexual abuse that occurs between a spouse, a significant other, or someone with whom you've had children or a past relationship. If you suspect that someone you know is being abused by an intimate partner, here are some signs to watch for. People who obviously have signs of injuries, bruises about the face or fingerprint marks on the arms, and then they explain it away with something that doesn't sound uh, quite right. Also, the signs that aren't as obvious are the excuses, being tardy for work, begging off family functions because you don't want someone to see the injuries. Victims of domestic violence become very isolated. They isolate them socially from social interaction, from interacting with neighbors. I was very silent. I was isolated from all my friends and all my family. I, he didn't like my friends, so I wasn't allowed to see my friends. He didn't like my family, so I didn't see my family. Amber's situation also had a dramatic impact on her four young children. I guess all children fight with their brothers and sisters, but they are sort of physical with each other. I can see them hitting each other, and it just breaks my heart. It's important to interview the children, to let the children know that they're there are people out there that are trying to help them, that people do understand what these children are going through. One of the things that we're trying to do is to encourage our officers to be more sensitive to children and the roles they play within domestic violence situations. If children are exposed to domestic violence, then there's a strong suggestion that they will continue the cycle of violence into adulthood. And it's that cycle of violence that motivates many to do all they can to prevent the abuse. Amber got a restraining order and a divorce. Now she's going to college and writing poetry that helps her heal. I was always faithful, accepting the hateful, cried my last tear when you whispered in my ear. And of course, she stays busy as a single mom. They're young, and I can just hopefully that I can put them in a really loving environment and just hope my goal is to break the cycle because my mother went through this and I'm going through this and I do not, I can't bear to see it happen to my girls or have this, have my son do this. I've always had a passion for children. Ultimately I found that one of the best things you can do for a child is to make sure his mother is safe and that also make sure he is safe. Uh, I have a passion for addressing the needs of children exposed to domestic violence. I would say at least 80 percent if not more of the domestic violence cases that come through my office involve children and I would like to stop the cycle of abuse. Children who go to school every day that have just witnessed their family member being beaten up and yet they're expected to go to school, perform and act right and that's something that we shouldn't be expecting our children to have to deal with. If you can help one family, that makes the woman's life better, the kids are affected by it, there's a whole chain reaction. A chain reaction that could involve you as well. Don't be afraid to step up. 
because it's only going to help the situation. It'll help you in the long run and it'll help that family. This is a subject that touches all of our lives, whether we are aware of it or not. That we have family, friends, co-workers, children, um, mates that may interact with people who are dealing with this or be victims themselves. If and when that time comes, the Sacramento Police Department hopes we can all be as brave as Amber and her friend. Thanks to Amber for sharing her harrowing story. Sadly, as we know from Amber's experience, adults aren't the only targets of domestic violence. We now know children are often the forgotten victims in a domestic violence situation, but they face even more abuse when the hostility is directed towards them. The men and women of the Sacramento Police Department respond to child abuse emergencies, and they rely on interagency cooperation to navigate this domestic crisis. For parents, there is no greater joy than seeing a bright smile on their child's face. And while all of these children look happy, statistics tell us that 49 of every 1,000 children don't have much of a reason to smile. That's because they're being abused, oftentimes by their own parents. Do your, listen to me. Look at me when I'm talking to you. Why are you looking at me like that? Why are you looking at me? Are you giving me a, an eye? Are you, look, look at me. Child abuse is any kind of physical, emotional, verbal abuse that a child might take that's beyond normal limits and will be considered beyond punishment. Um, and that's what we use as a guideline. And it's pretty much what you think common sense wise would be too much for a child. And we take into consideration their age, in the level of learning. In addition, for it to be considered child abuse, California law classifies a child as anyone from birth to age 17. We get a lot of domestic violence situations. We see children that have been exploited, abused. In a lot of cases, it's extremely upsetting. We get like four, anywhere from two to 3,000 calls a month. Martina Rico Ramos is a child protective services social worker investigating child abuse instigated by a parent or a family member. Her office is located at the Sacramento Police Department headquarters. One thing that's unique about the Sacramento Police Department is we've gotten into an MOU or a memorandum of understanding with child protective services and they come in almost on every single case and we have a CPS worker on staff with SACPD who work in conjunction with detectives. It's been an awesome experience because we have uh, CPS social workers have been able to get information that normally they wouldn't have gotten. It's also a beneficial partnership in terms of safety. Just as in domestic violence situations, child abuse calls can be extremely volatile. You're a pig! You're a pig! And if your mom comes home... Never respond without more than one officer. You always have two at a minimum officer, and one's always covering the child. Plus, you're probably going to have social services to go out there. Certainly the risk increases when we go out there by ourselves. We don't know what we're walking into and that's a little bit unnerving sometimes. When we're going with law enforcement, the fear kind of reduces a little bit because we have backup. And that backup comes in handy when dealing with this violence. While there are many factors that contribute to child abuse, such as financial stress, mental health issues, and the cycle of violence, there does seem to be a common thread. Unfortunately, a lot of the families that we work with uh, are involved in drug and alcohol abuse, and it's very hard for them to stay clean and to, to um, follow through with what is expected of them to create a safe environment for the children. I'd say 90% of the time involves some kind of substance abuse. Somehow it's in the mix, either as part of the problem itself or as a result thereof the problem. And this problem doesn't just encompass physical injury. There's four categories in child abuse. We have the physical abuse, sexual abuse, we have the emotional abuse, and general neglect. And flunk, flunk, because that's what you're gonna do. You're gonna fail in life because you can't do your homework. You're a loser. Emotional abuse encompasses verbal harassment and sexual abuse can include a new technological approach that pedophiles are using to target children. High-tech crime experts like Sacramento Police Detective Rich Gilliland warn parents to closely monitor their children's internet usage. Uh, we recommend if your children are on the computer, 90% of the problems that we have come right out of chat rooms. 
So if you can keep the children off of the chat rooms, so much the better. Families are encouraged to keep the computer in an open area of the home so that a child's online activity can be monitored at all times. The danger of your child becoming a target of an online predator increases when the computer with internet access is housed in the privacy of their bedroom. Uh, parents should definitely warn their children never to meet uh, in person uh, a person they have met on the internet because you don't really know who it is. They're going to generally purport to be somebody different on the internet than they really are. In other words, they will say they're an 18 year old boy and you get there and it's some 55 year old child molested. It's not all about the homework. Whether a child is abused sexually, psychologically, or physically, the results are often the same. Well, the signs are similar because it affects a child in similar ways. They feel like it's their fault. They feel like they're ashamed of themselves. There's usually a change in a child's behavior if, they're, if something's going on in the home. You know, they could, if they're being physically abused, they could become uh, more aggressive in their play. Do they spend a lot more time in their room? Do they not want to go to school for some reason? Are they afraid to go out with their friends? Are they becoming reclusive and only playing into video games all the time? These are signs a child withdrawn. If your child or a child you know has been through the withdrawal process as a victim of abuse, law enforcement hopes to intervene. Studies have shown the earlier we can intervene, the younger the child is, the better chance we have of rehabilitating that child so they won't be an abuser. The satisfaction comes when we're actually able to do something about it and stop the pain and trauma in that person's life and then help them to move on with a better life, a more productive life and one where they don't have to incorporate fear and loneliness and abuse. And those better lives free of abuse are out there thanks to the hard work of the Sacramento Police Department. There was a child and we were checking out why he wasn't going to school. The reason why was he would leave home and you know, just would stay away all, all the hours because he didn't want people at the school to see his bruises from his family. But he still loved his parents. And for him, it was a, he thought that was normal. To be beat up every day was what America was all about. So we intervened, had CPS work with us. Now he's doing well in school. He's got a foster family that loves him. And CPS and I did it as a joint group. A joint effort that brought about a sweet success story and one that makes everyone glad, including Sergeant Castiglia, that he and his colleagues are on the job protecting children in our community. It makes you want to come back to work the next day. <laughs> Along with children, many believe the elderly are among the most vulnerable members of our society. They're often not able to protect themselves from abuse. It can come in the form of physical assaults or financial sabotage. And as our elderly population increases, experts predict the crime of elder abuse will continue to grow. Aging is inevitable. We're all headed down that path toward those golden years, but for some, these years aren't so golden. Financial uncertainty or a decline in physical health can cause a person in their later years to become dependent and in some cases, vulnerable. We see quite a few elder abuse cases. I think it'll grow. If, um, if the elder population increases, our, our caseloads of um, victims will increase, unfortunately. And while the numbers are high, the awareness among the public remains low. I think that the public in general is unaware of elder abuse and that to educate them as to what to watch for and the signs that, that should be indicators of abuse would be a good thing. That's why the Attorney General has started a new public service campaign to inform Californians about the dangers of elder and dependent adult abuse. The abuse of elders and dependent adults takes many forms. In California, more than 225,000 cases occur every year. Through this media campaign, the Attorney General's office is getting the news out about elder abuse. And there are several different types of, of abuse. They would include physical abuse, neglect, financial abuse, sexual abuse, mental abuse, as well as verbal abuse and isolation. California law classifies elders as those 65 or older. A dependent adult would be anybody aged 18 to 64 who has a physical or mental disability which would restrict their abilities to carry out their normal activities of daily life. Detective Crosby works in collaboration with a number of agencies to protect the rights of elders and dependent adults. 
whether she's investigating abuse against a victim or teaching a training workshop to officers on how to detect and prevent elder abuse, she's often accompanied by Janet Fernandez. Janet is a victim's advocate for Easter Seals, but her office is at police headquarters. It's very unusual for victim advocates to be housed in law enforcement here. So the Sacramento Police Department is really ahead of its time. The other agencies and resources that I utilize are vitally important to each and every case. I'm not able to go out and personally meet with all of the people that um, are being reported as possible victims. And I depend upon those social workers to let me know whether a criminal investigation needs to be started. Detective Langston also works in conjunction with social services to apprehend criminals who financially abuse elders. The elders are trusting. They seek the companionship. Oftentimes their family and friends don't live near them, so they want somebody to talk to. And a lot of times the person doesn't have capacity, so they're not aware of what's going on. So they're easy targets, unfortunately. Easy targets for friends, family members, or caretakers who steal from their bank accounts, personal belongings, and credit cards. The elderly are also frequently the victims of financial yes, scams. Hi, this is Brian Johnson. I have great news for you. I've won the Canadian sweepstakes? Wow, this is terrific. I've never won anything before. Canadian lottery scam, usually an elder's called and told that they've won a, a lottery. All you have to do is wire us a $5,000 tax fee that's required by the Canadian government. And in order to gain their prize, they need to pay some taxes on the prize. Usually the money's wired, sent to Canada. Thank you. I, yes, I will wire it right away. I'm on my way to the bank. And, of course, the elder never receives any money from that. It makes you sad to realize that this is going on. These people have worked very hard their entire life for what they have, and with one person it can all be taken away. There are ways to help protect your loved one from becoming a victim of a scam. First and foremost, it's important to be an active part of the elder's life. Be there for them and, and spend time with them and listen to them because oftentimes criminals take advantage of that loneliness. For the other types of elder and dependent adult abuse, there are a number of things to watch for. Some signs that elder abuse is occurring would be isolation of the victim. If the individual is not acting the way they normally act, nothing you, you can necessarily put your finger on. There could be changes in spending habits, unexplained injuries, unexplained changes in their medical status, such as a significant weight loss in a short amount of time. They may start wearing clothing that's inappropriate for the weather, that's covering up bruises or injuries. And that tendency to cover up the problem is an ongoing struggle for law enforcement. I have victims that are often afraid of, of what's going to happen or a change in their situation or that they're very embarrassed. They don't want to report it because they don't want people to know what's happened. That's a hurdle we have to overcome when investigating it. Each of these individuals has a unique and passionate perspective in preventing crimes against the elderly and dependent adults. When I was very young, I gave birth to a child who was diagnosed later with a severe disability. He's 26 years old now. And you don't raise a child to become an adult with a disability without learning to advocate. We know that sometimes these people have longer lives to live, and we hope they do, and they need the financial means to take care of themselves. Um, so we need to take these crimes very seriously. Both of my grandmothers are still alive. Uh, one lives in the state of Washington, um, le led a very frugal life, and it came to one of my uncle's attention that over $80,000 had been taken out of her account and sent to a scam that often targets elders. Sacramento police officers who specialize in fighting this type of crime have a tremendous sense of pride about the work they do. This job has been so rewarding for me. If I can help somebody's life to be better, then it's worth it. In case you're thinking that hope is lost, keep in mind that last year alone, we've assisted more than 6,000 women in crisis. Over 700 children benefited from their services.
and Waves Hotline received more than 25,000 calls. Hope is out there, and often it begins with something as simple as a phone call. If you or someone you know needs to make that call, here are some important numbers. For an emergency situation involving family abuse, call 911. Weeb's domestic violence crisis hotline number is area code 916-920-2952. To report suspected child abuse, contact Child Protective Services at area code 916-875-KIDS. And if you or someone you know is the victim of elder or dependent adult abuse, you can call 1-888-436-3600. Rescuing elders and dependent adults is important work, and right now we have a lighthearted rescue story for you. In each edition of City Beat, we bring you what we call Above and Beyond. It highlights work within the Sacramento Police Department that goes beyond the duties of the job, and someone outside of the department brings it to our attention. I live in Midtown Sacramento and had a good friend from Kentucky visiting for the weekend. Of course I wanted to show her the highlights of our fair city, so one of our first stops was to the state capitol. Unfortunately it was closed, so we weren't able to go inside, but had a nice tour of the outside and surrounding monuments and park. So we were walking back to the car, and as we got closer, we see this lady in the wheelchair. And she's not moving, she's out of her wheelchair, she's kind of looking around and looking like she needs some help. We came over and asked her if she needed any help, what was wrong, and she said, I ran out of gas. I called 411 on my cell phone, and they gave me the non-emergency number to the Sacramento Police Department. Soon I was explaining the situation to a dispatcher. She assured me that she would send someone out immediately. I just put myself in her shoes, and I just try to make it happen for her, that's all. For me personally, what motivates me, um, the way I live my life is by the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. I was amazed when only five minutes later, a bicycle patrolman came cycling up in response to our call. They assured me that they had the situation in hand, and in the two minutes or so that it took us to say our goodbyes, a patrol car had pulled up to give the lady and her little dog a ride home. Keep up the good work. I'm proud of my city's police force and was especially pleased that I could show my friend yet another reason why I love Sacramento. Thank you, Tina Glover. October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month, and in recognition of that, this episode of City Beat has taken a look at the world of abuse and how it invades our families. The Sacramento Police Department is prepared to intervene in situations of a domestic disturbance, child abuse, or elder violence. Once the police department gets involved, there's a wide array of resources to help the victim find protection and to recover. That help does provide a light at the end of the tunnel. For more information on the Sacramento Police Department and this edition of City Beat, log on to the website at sacpd.org. We hope you'll join us again for the next edition of City Beat when we take a look behind the scenes at the capital city's police force. For City Beat, I'm Joe Oliver. <laughs>